the lies down. Well, we see the 2012 kickoff of Obama's campaign. They claim they dumped the body of bin Laden in the ocean. Uh, they released a fake photo Sunday night. Uh, yesterday morning had to admit it was a fake photo. Uh, they've got new fake photos. Uh, we'll play just a few seconds of this. They've released, uh, of course, uh, cartoons showing bin Laden shooting his AK-47 and the Navy SEALs uh, taking him uh, out. We'll roll some of that. Uh, in the background right now for folks. This is so cartoonish. And what concerns me more than anything is that our expert guests have broken down here on air. Webster Tarpley, uh, investigative journalist, Wayne Madsen, others. And we've also seen this in the foreign news that Pakistan was starting to make deals with Saudi Arabia. That Saudi Arabia knows it's being double crossed by the West. Uh, and that uh, there was going to be big movement in Pakistan. Pakistan said, get your drones out of the country. And then magically, this happens. There's this raid, and now they're saying that Pakistan knew he was there for six years, as if Western intelligence wouldn't know that either, and uh, they won't produce the body. This is a serious frame-up, it looks like, of Pakistan, uh, moving towards serious confrontations. Lieutenant General Hamid Ghul, former head of Pakistani intelligence, really leading the attack on the Soviets in the 1980s, called a hero by our media at the time. Uh, he's been called now by some of our media the real leader uh, of al-Qaeda, which uh, he says is asinine. Uh, General Ghul, thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you, Alex. I know you have a lot uh, of uh, other media to attend to. We've only got about 25 minutes with you. Sir, you've got the floor. Break down now that we have some more time to look at this uh, propaganda move, uh, where you stand and what you believe is happening geopolitically. Well, I think they are tar targeting Pakistan, and uh, I think uh, Patriots, as it was said by New York Times, is now gearing up, he's limbering up for uh, uh, launching his third offensive against Pakistan. So I think that is where Pakistan is being cornered now. A case is being built against Pakistan. And they are saying that ISI was harboring this uh, great terrorist. Uh, but uh, at the same time, if you look at it uh, professionally, all the time the CIA, the political leadership of America, and, uh, and even all the European countries and their intelligence services were actually putting Pakistani intelligence on the wrong posse by saying that uh, the high-value targets were hiding in North Waziristan in, in that terrain which uh, adjoins with uh, Afghanistan. So they were pounding Pakistani civilians and uh, poor, hapless uh, villages there with their drone attacks, with the hellfires and with their Reaper uh, missiles. So they have caused something like 2,500 casualties when the man that they were hunting was actually hiding uh, in in one of the urban centers of Pakistan. Now, this is remarkable. I mean, they, it is not, it's an intelligent, uh, okay, we accept their version, and we say that they are not framing up, and this is not uh, something, although that is a very popular theory here, here in Pakistan, but if we were to believe every word of what they are saying, then they are more responsible for misguiding Pakistani intelligence, other intelligence agencies, because the CIA and FBI and MI6 had been given free hand in Pakistan to hunt down the terrorists or what they had named. And we had caught so many of them, from Khalid Sheikh Mohammed to Faraj al Lipi and all the others from the urban centers of Pakistan. So why were they not also responsible for this failure? Agreed that there have been intelligence failure in this uh, intelligence craft. Failures are not something which is outlandish. Sometimes they do happen. But ISI, instead of being lauded for its good work, I think ISI was, uh, uh, has been scapegoated by the CIA and all the other big wigs there in America. And they want to now build a case against Pakistan. Although Pakistan really is suffering so much because our sovereignty has been trampled over our security has been breached. These helicopters, they've had spotted the blind areas in our radar coverage. 
and they came in uh, as if they were the enemies of Pakistan. Now it uh, brings to light that the relationship with Pakistan, uh, uh, America's relationship, was always one of animosity, not uh, of friendship. And while we were being told that we are friends of America and we are doing everything possible for them, we lost something like 35,000 uh, lives in this uh, process and we suffered a loss of 68 billion dollars in economic uh, uh, terms only and uh, everything else that went wrong with Pakistan the revenge war and so on and so forth Pakistan has suffered enormously but now they tell us that you are responsible for everything isn't it amazing and if let's say Osama is the one that they killed yesterday why did they have to kill him he was a sick man. He could have been hauled up in the helicopter and taken away. And if, and I imagine they haven't shown the pictures. They used to show the pictures of Saddam Hussein. And they used to show his teeth also inside of his mouth. And they used to rejoice over it. And now when it comes to Osama, they, are, they say that dump him in the sea as soon as possible. I think there is a lot that goes... Uh, unsaid, and I think it has to be it's an, an untold story which has to come out one day. And I think a probe must be held. If the American administration is reluctant to hold that probe, probe themselves, let the international community demand from them that we, we uh, ignored the 9-11 thing because you said that this had happened to us and we didn't ask for the evidence. But now it's about time that we ask for the evidence. General Ghoul, you brought up a point that is absolutely central, obviously, here. Um, the saber-rattling began against Pakistan recently when Pakistan said enough of the drones. Um, I've interviewed Special Forces troops on air. Uh, we've had uh, Colonel Schaefer on repeatedly. Uh, we've had calls from listeners. It's been admitted in the news that U.S. troops, CIA, Special Forces, given unfettered access everywhere in Pakistan for now uh, many, many years, and the fact that they're blaming Pakistan and saying, you knew he was there for six years, you just threw the gauntlet right back down and said, you were all over this country, you've been directing the Pakistani army into regions to back you up, going into tribal areas, which of course, as you have pointed out, does stir up the population, and then they're called terrorists, and now they have us believe in the heart of your West Point, in the heart of much of your intelligence system, he was there. So if he was there, uh, basically what you're saying, correct me if I'm wrong, 100% six years, the U.S., British, Israelis, they knew as well. Yes, indeed, because I think they have to share the responsibility. They can't shrug it off because they were the superior partner in this war against terrorism. And they had more resources, far, far, far more resources than ISI ever possessed. So you were responsible, equally responsible. And besides, you were all the time focusing the ISI, directing them towards the northwest frontier province. Why were you doing this? Now, this is an... They always get away. They, they, they never are answerable. They were never answerable to nine, for 9-11. Because no heads were rolled at that time, none from the air traffic control, none from the FBI, none from the CIA. And none from the Air Force, which took 112 minutes to come into action. Can you imagine? They killed Osama bin Laden, if at all that was Osama bin Laden. I don't believe. There are a lot of theories which are going on here. But suppose they killed Osama bin Why did they have to kill him? So that if they he's taken alive... If they had asked the ISI, pointed out to the ISI, which they knew, then ISI would capture him alive. And then he would be put on trial and he will spill the beans that 9-11 was not done by him. And this was the fear because of which they didn't inform the ISI and they went for this hunt themselves independently. Uh, yes, sir. I saw in press TV uh, last night the Iranian government is saying they have intel uh, that uh, uh, Al-Qaeda, uh, back from when Al-Qaeda was the good guys in the 80s, was going to leak the fact that U.S. intelligence was basically puppeteering terrorists to then blame it on Mujahideen. And it came out last week in Sky Television that the number one Al-Qaeda operative uh, inside Pakistan carrying out attacks on the Pakistani military, and this is confirmed, was MI6. It's also been confirmed, even uh, Loftus, former uh, head of counterterrorism with the FBI, 
Mr. Loftus, John Loftus, he came out on Fox and said that a SWAT ran the 7-7 bombings in London. He is MI6 and has an MI6 security clearance to travel wherever he wishes while he's on the news as the head terrorist. Amwar Al-Awlaki, trained in the U.S., born in the U.S., Fox News reports does dine secretly at the Pentagon and get orders. He then runs the Patsy attacks. As the former head of Pakistani intelligence, someone with connections, I know you don't like to speculate, but looking at the evidence we have, uh, bottom line, there is this group they call Al-Qaeda that are really double, triple agents uh, carrying out events to then be framed on Iraq, on Libya, on Pakistan, on Iran, a cookie cutter, whoever they want to attack. Is that a correct assessment in my analysis, or can you add to that, uh, General Gould? Absolutely, Alex. I think you are absolutely on the dot. This is what they are doing. They are out to conquer the world at the cost of the American people, their comfort, their lives, their blood, at the cost of their hard-earned dollars. They have this group is is devastating. I mean, they have, they are harboring such ambitions which are anti-humanity, which are anti above all the American people. And if you give them free hand, now they are trying to go for Pakistan, and this will be disaster because a desperate Pakistan would be a terrible thing for them to handle. I don't know why they are building up case against Pakistan. Raymond Davis, the in the uh, in in that case. The Russian intelligence gave out the information. Pakistan was unfortunately not able to do so because of the reason, because Americans come down hard upon them. But he was carrying some ounces of enriched uranium. And he was to go and carry out some kind of action somewhere else and then blame it on Pakistan that Pakistan's nuclear assets are leaky and therefore they have to be taken out. They have to be plucked out. And this is my fear is that they have uh, sp spotted the areas from where they can infiltrate and they can come and pick up our nuclear assets or do whatever they want because they have such liberty of movement here, unfortunately because of uh, uh, Pervez Musharraf who was a dictator and they supported him to the hilt and he framed such policies which are being now followed by um, the, uh, the present uh, uh, regime which calls itself uh, democratic, but it is not democratic because it is the product of the NRO, the National Reconciliation Order, which was actually stage managed by Condoleezza Rice, and it was signed between uh, David Miliband of the UK and uh, Richard Boucher from the American side, and of course President Zardari from this side, and Benazir at that time. But Benazir became a little violent and she started reacting, so she had to be removed by them. If you remember, John Negro Ponte, Ponte came here and he wanted to talk to her that she was becoming rebellious and she refused to meet him. And then thereafter, she was no more. I think this is a very dirty game which is being played by this group. Uh, incredible information, sir. I'd like to go back to the American recently arrested by Pakistani intelligence. Thank God you stopped him. It's now been confirmed he was trying to get uranium to some of their cutout Al-Qaeda patsies um, to claim that uh, your nuclear weapons program is leaking. Uh, clearly, uh, they now are moving to go into Pakistan um, uh, will they try coups to bring in a soft coup? Or, uh, according to my military sources, they are preparing commando-style attacks, uh, bombardments going in, getting the nukes, and then starting a larger attack and then having India attack. But the word is China's not going to put up with this. I mean, we're talking about World War III. General, please give us the possible scenarios and the time frame on this. Well, I think it was McChrystal's idea, and uh, he, in his briefing to the uh, to the president, he had said that he all he needs is a couple of helicopters and uh, some commandos and a, an abseiling rope, and then he can go and pluck out anything that you have. And I mean, he said I'll require a backing of three helicopters, and they can uh, take out Pakistan's uh, all the nuclear triggers. But then they thought the better of it because Pakistan's nuclear assets are dispersed. 
And if you touch Pakistan's nuclear assets, a lot of countries in the region who are very dear to America may be in trouble. Besides that, I think right behind our back, China, who is a very reliable friend, Pakistan will be left with no option but to lean upon China. And that could, as you are very rightly pointing out, that could start a third world war. It is very dangerous. I don't know what, why are they trying to play with fire? Because it will ignite an inferno which will consume the entire region.